Hey, welcome back to Leafy Life. I'm Susie and this channel is my space to share my love of houseplants. In this house time I've seen all my peperomia together um, it's really nice to have gathered them together and and see them alongside each other and kind of just realize how varied and kind of similar they are. <laughs> I'm gonna start by showing you the peperomia that I currently have and um, show you the first one that I ever got. So I've got I think about 20 peperomia it's not the world's largest collection but I'm not going for numbers. <laughs> um, but yeah, about 20, and that of that 20, there are quite a few duplicates. So I think I have about 13, 14 different peperomia. I think that's right. Um, and yeah, I'm going to show you first of all my first ever peperomia that I ever got. And it's how I discovered that peperomia existed. Um, I'd never heard of them before. I'd never seen one. Um, I just saw it in a DIY store loved it this was very very early in when, when i first started keeping house plants um i just saw it and loved it and brought it home and did my best to look after it knowing nothing about it slowly started discovering some facts about it and um it's still with me <laughs> which is really nice <clears throat> so here it is this is peperomia rana verde now this is um it's okay but it's not in its best state um i've just been dealing with thrips with it so um yeah i've had it for about maybe three and a half years i would say um and this is the mother plant so i'm just really happy that i still have it i have taken so many cuttings from it and created more plants so when i say i have duplicates of various peperomia i have quite a few of this one so where are they hiding oh it's right here this one is um, a fairly nice full version actually. This one I, I took cuttings of a few years ago. Um, I think this is one of the first cuttings I took and kept it and it's just so perfect. It's in a little terracotta pot. I bottom water this one. It's in a little saucer um, and yeah I've never really had any problems with this particular one and it's just really compact, really lovely and full and deep green and and just just lovely. Um, I consider it my baby one but it, it has got mature and then there's another little one somewhere oh there it is this is one that i took are you okay yeah all is well but i'm very clumsy um this is a more recent cutting that i took in the past well probably about in the last year a few months ago more than just a few months ago probably um so yeah i took this cutting and this one lives in my son's room isn't it dinky and adorable i just think it's like a miniature little little plant i know it's a little plant but it's like a it's almost like a miniature big plant <laughs> it's almost like a doll's house plant it's so cute um so and then i have one in my daughter's room too which is kind of probably size wise between the smallest one and that 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 medium one um and yeah i've taken various cuttings over the years and they're a really nice one to take cuttings from i take leaf cuttings and i've always propagated straight into soil so i've just put the put the stem straight into soil and then waited a really really quite long time to see signs of growth which is basically that when you see the tiny baby green leaves pop up um so it starts clumping out from there and it's just just magical I highly recommend it I love watching that happen um, but you just have to be a bit patient because it's not it's not just a few weeks it's it's sometimes months before that happens it depends when you do it in the year but even in the hotter months I've I found it to be a slower process with this particular peperomia but that's fine it's worth it in the end it's just it's slow growing it's it, there's no race it's just it'll happen when it's ready um so yeah so that that one I got um I bought that brought it home didn't know anything about it um and that's where my journey with peperomia began to just understand what their needs are and what they like um so they don't like to be wet 
they need to dry out as much as possible between watering. Some people say let them dry out completely between waterings um, and other people say just let them dry out almost completely. Um, I think it might depend on the home and the substrate and the individual plant um, because there are a lot of different peperomia. There are I think about a thousand, over a thousand that are known um, and of those there are about 40 that are actual workable house plants that tolerate the conditions in our home so there are about 40 to choose from um, if you're looking to, to have one yourself um, yeah of, of those thousand I think there are some duplicates so there are plants that have been discovered more than once and named different names um, so that's why they're not quite sure of exact numbers and there are peperomia still being discovered so that's really exciting um, what was I going to say tangents um, bear with me I remembered it was about watering um yes yeah, so you just you don't want to overwater peperomia they will rot they are their roots will rot they are the easiest plant to to give root rot um but they also don't like being underwatered so it's they're not hard but they are particular so with peperomia I have learnt a lot and I'm still learning and I think there are certain peperomia that I find really easy and there are certain ones that I have found a little bit more complicated to get to know. Um, there are peperomia that I have lost completely from just my own error, um, usually actually from underwatering lately. So it's all because their roots are very, very fragile and thin. They're just like a really hair-like little thread of a root. Um, and so if they are sitting in too much water for too long, they're just gonna rot really quickly. Um, and also if they dry out and then are left dry for a long time, the roots will dry out too and won't won't be functional to suck up any water when you do then water them again and the plant is gonna be a goner. So what I've been learning lately, um, through losing a few peperomia, is that I really need to adjust keep a regular eye on their soil so I don't have a schedule for watering any of my plants it's all about how the soil feels and looks um, and just you know it's going to dry out at different times um, a different amounts you know whether it's um, a hotter day or the radiators have been on more so it's really just about keeping an eye on the soil yourself and getting a feel for it yourself and getting familiar with each plant um, and, and what is likely um, but yeah, I sadly lost a few peperomia um, just over this winter and it wasn't through the cold, um, they were they were perfectly warm but they were just, they were in tiny pots, they were young, it was the youngest peperomia, they were in tiny pots um, like this size, like that smallest nursery pot that you can buy, there, there are a lot of peperomia being sold in this size pot which is fine, they're fine like that, they actually like to not have a lot of space for their roots being, being small roots you know there's not a big root system in there and they don't want to have too much substrate around them um because they're just going to end up sitting in more moisture than they can absorb um so it's not that the plants plant pot is is bad it's just it's more likely to dry out because there's just not so much substrate in there so I had a lot of my peperomia you may have seen in one of my kind of wintry festive um, twinkly lights videos that I had a little shelf set up for some peperomia which was delightful I loved looking at those and they looked really nice together lots of little pots um, all together filled with peperomia um, and that was lovely for a while, um, but during that period, I then wasn't able to spend a lot of time in that room for various reasons, being Christmas holidays, and I wasn't doing work in that room like usual, I wasn't being at my desk very often, um, which I had been. And so I wasn't doing regular checks because out of sight, out of mind uh, with me. So if it's a room I just don't go into suddenly, I, I find that I completely neglect the plants. So I've awoken up to that problem and I'm dealing with it differently now um, moving forwards. But yeah, a few of those peperomia on that shelf, um, they, they just died um, all at once, all very quickly, just because they had no water. Um, and it's not just the pot size, it was the substrate. So with peperomia they prefer to have um just really nice airy loose well draining soil um so with mine i've always added a bit of um a bit of perlite um but then lately i'd been doing some orchid bark type stuff and just like quite a chunky mix which they like um but i went a bit too far so <laughs> 
like I say, you learn through experience with these plants and sometimes it's a little bit of tinkering and a bit of back and forth and adjustments and sometimes you go a bit to one extreme and realise that you need to pull back and, and change what you're doing and that's what I've learned about the substrate for Peperomia is that I had been making it far too well draining and there was just nothing for the plants to hold on to moisture wise and they were just too thirsty too often and, and just struggled um, and then coupled with the not looking at them um, often enough that was the main problem because I think I mean they could probably survive in that substrate if I was looking at them every day and giving them little top ups every now and then but it was just, yeah, a combination of those factors. Um, but I think for me, with my busy life and fatigue and stuff um, and just brain attention, for me, I'm learning that actually I need to, my, my peperomia to be in a slightly less well-draining soil. They still need to be in a well-draining soil. They don't want to sit in really, really rich, moist compost where it's just going to sit soggy the whole time. But I just took it too far, so I'm going to just dial it back on the uh, on the chunky mix and I'm still going to be mixing in some perlite but I'm just gonna just gonna go steady with that and find my own level with what I feel is comfortable for my peperomia so that's what I'm doing going forward so when I repot today I'm gonna just um just kind of get a feel for what, what seems the right amount of perlite and I'm just gonna completely ease off on the on the chunky stuff for now um particularly with the younger plants and the smaller plants um so yeah so that's what I've been learning I hope that's useful for you guys to hear if you've had any problems with your peperomia or if you're about to start or you're about to go and buy a peperomia I do find that the peperomia in the shops aren't in a soil that I feel very comfortable with it does feel too too moisture retentive and I usually do repot most peperomia um fairly soon after buying them when I haven't done that, I have run into a lot of problems with the peperomia. I've got one now, which I'm going to show you later, actually. Um, and yeah, I'm going to repot that. That's one that I had I'd bought and didn't repot it as soon as I meant to. And it's just got some problems. Um, so I'll talk you through that later because I definitely don't have time to repot it before I have to nip off for a minute. Um, but yeah, I just I really wanted to show you this um, my first ever peperomia because it's just gorgeous so that's peperomia rana verdi and um yeah it's actually i think one of the easiest peperomia i've ever kept um it does seem to be very easily happy at the moment um as i said this one is a little sparser than usual because of the um <laughs> because of the thrips the pesties um so i've just been dealing with that i've just given them another little wash down and a horticultural soap spray i'm going to try and do that every couple of days just to keep on top of it because i did that a few days ago and it was looking so clean and so lovely and i'd taken off all the old dead leaves and it was just looking so so shining and lovely um but yeah a few days later it was crawling with a very um uh young thrips so the pale the pale thrips um like loads on one leaf um which is it's unusual for me to have such a um such a break out of them it's usually like one under a leaf but they these ones they're brazen they they seem to like being on the top of this peperomia so i haven't actually there's not really any i think oh there's one <laughs> there's not as many underneath as there were on top um so so anyway so I've just done some more soap on this one and I'm going to make sure that I do that again um in another day or two um but yeah uh so so this one it's had a lot of back and forth so when I first bought it it was it was probably about half the size of this and it was um it was really really full and then when it first encountered problems eventually um it lost a few leaves but it pushed back out and then I think probably last year, and I can't remember if I've spoken to you about this before, but it got to the point where it was, it was just, it looked dead. Uh, it, I'd, I'd really neglected it in the room it had been in and it had just had to lose, it had lost all its leaves. So it had gone down to, I don't know if you can see, I'll try and post a picture. Actually, that's a good angle. You can see the trunks. They're quite, um, they're quite sort of woody. And as the plant matures, the leaves are just going up and up. So as you as they fall off they kind of leave a bit more trunk gradually um so this started out being very close to the soil level and now now the leaves are a bit more above the soil which i quite like actually because it gives a bit of clearance for air to get in there and light um 
but yeah so it, it actually got to the point where it had no leaves <laughs> i was so sad because this was the mother plant and i'd had it a long time and i have very fond fond feelings for it because um i bought it around the time i was pregnant with my daughter our second child and um we kind of named her after it she's not called peperomia but it was kind of like a whole um convoluted story about <laughs> about the um about the words and my son's kind of um little nickname for her while she was in my tummy and then how that led to um so we called her peppy when she was in my tummy because my son loved the name of this plant he was only like three at the time he loved um he loved the name peperomia and suggested it <laughs> for her name and I was like oh that's really cute let's let's call her Peppy and so the whole time she was in my tummy from then on she was called Peppy um but when she was born it's funny how she didn't seem like a Peppy anymore and we we, we weren't ever going to call her that long term but it was her nickname while she was growing in me and um yeah so her her current name is is actually not um it's more like a derivation so um using bits of bits of that <laughs> um and um don't worry, it's not a really wacky name that she's going to struggle with or be teased for. It's, it's a very pretty actual name. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a, it's how we got to that choice of name was through this plant, basically. So I feel very attached to this plant for lots of reasons to do with that. Plus, it's a beautiful plant. And I think when you've kept a plant for a number of years, you kind of get even more, more determined to keep it going because it's you're like you're on a roll with it and you've had success. And it would it'd be more of a shame than than if one died soon after buying it in some ways just because you're so attached to it so yeah I am very attached to this plant and um, I'm really glad it's still alive so yeah when it got down to being like just these bare trunks it was so awful and the soil was just biscuit dry it was awful um, but I gave it a big soak and it it took off again it was so lovely seeing these brown sticks just sprout out with these minuscule little vibrant specks of green um and from there it just became so full again over the past sort of year or so um and then i think a few months ago i did a big weed out uh, because i yeah I, was, I had it in my desk like uh, during an evening and i shone my spotlight into it and i got in there really close and i was able to like pick out it was really satisfying pick out all the old stems and dead leaves and just pull it all out let lots of air and light in there and just kind of clear up the soil um where it you know just all the debris of old brown leaves just naturally falling down there and drying out um so that was really satisfying and it was looking really bushy and lovely again after that and carried on growing nicely um and it's been doing fine for a while and then the other day discovered thrips so yeah realized that that was the cause of a lot of leaves suddenly dying off so it's just a bit sparse again but it's still alive and it will be okay so i'm just going to nurse it through this thrips invasion um there is actually some new growth coming um just see if you can get a good look. T tell you what, I'm just going to take some nice photos and show you all the new growth. So I'll just I'll just stick it in here for you to have a look at. But yeah, that's how that one is doing. Um, don't worry, I won't go into this level of depth about each and every pepperoni because that would make like a day long video. But I just wanted to tell you about this one because there was a lot more to it. Um, but yeah, so that's that one. It is now the evening and um, I have tea and brownie and I'm down on the floor to do some potting. Um, but first I'm going to show you the rest of the peperomia that you haven't yet seen. Um, I'm sorry about the lighting. I'm going to turn on a, a bigger main light actually and I'm just going to bring up each plant closer to the camera so you can see them up close. I'm going to have to be effectively yelling at you because I don't have a microphone. Um, so I just want the, the camera to pick up the, the sound as much as possible. Um, and you are more than a metre away. Way. so um, I'm just gonna try to project more than usual <laughs> um, so yeah uh, one by one I'm gonna show them to you okay in no particular order just whatever I can grab uh, next uh, here is the raindrop peperomia peperomia polybotria um, it's beautiful you can see why it gets its um, common name beautiful beautiful raindroppy shape um, I really love this I know it looks very similar to um, pepper Pylea peperomioides, <laughs> hence the name, um, peperomioides looking like peperomia. Um, but yeah, it has that more of a more of a um, pointy tip. Um, this is the one I got from Pylea plant, plant shop in Froome, a few months ago, back in the autumn. And it's doing well, but I think I, well, it's been through thrips. Um, so it's coming out the other side of having thrips. So it has lost a few leaves. Um, 
and I did let it dry out as I said I had been doing that um, but it's okay and I think with a bit of with a bit of gentle love and care it will get there in the end I'm sorry I am struggling over my words um, a whole lot of things have happened since I last <laughs> last spoke on here um, and it is the evening after a busy day but yeah I will do my best anyway I love this one I think it's really beautiful but yeah it will hopefully be in better shape in a few weeks or months time. I'll just keep a close eye on it, keep doing some horticultural soapy spray to um, make sure that the thrips stay away and make sure that I keep the, the moisture levels right for it. I think it's really beautiful. Um, I can't say if it's an easy peperomia compared to others or not because I haven't kept it for very long and I've encountered pests and all sorts. So. We shall see if long term it's an easier one to keep or not. If you have kept this one, what do you think? Do you feel like it's fairly manageable for a beginner? Um, how does it compare with other pepperoni you've grown or other plants you've grown? Um, yeah, so that's that one. I don't need to do anything with that at the moment. It's in the it's still in the right sized pot. Um, it has got some new growth coming. So where um, where the leaves fell off um, from those exact points, it's putting out some tiny little kind of like tiny little spiky new growthy leaves so that's really good actually and I hadn't actually noticed that until I, until I was talking to you now so that's really nice to notice that um I will try to pop in a photo a daylight photo of those because they are teeny uh, but yeah so that's that one this next one is my um, peperomia rotundifolia and it's in a bit of a sorry state I've been having to really take care of this um lately basically <laughs> So as I said, peperomia require quite a lot of light. Uh, bright and direct light is their favourite. They don't want to be scorched by bright, bright hot sun. But um, yeah, in the wild, they kind of often live in the shade under other trees or attached to other trees. Um, and they do like they do like bright light, but they don't want it like to singe them. <laughs> um, but yeah, this one I was pushing to the extreme. I had it in a a really shady part of my hallway, up high, kind of at the bottom of the stairs against the wall on a little shelf that I've put up almost at ceiling height. It was very silly of me to put it there. At the time I wanted something um, small and traily that wasn't in a really big pot because the, the shelf is very narrow from back to front. But that was a really silly choice. That was a choice completely based on what I wanted and what I wanted a plant to look like there rather than choosing a place based on what the plant would thrive with. So. <laughs> Yeah, so let that be a lesson to me because I left it there in that I watered it regularly. It's it's been it's been healthy. It hasn't it hasn't been neglected. It just was not getting enough light. So it was growing slowly, and the growth that it put out was um, very leggy, very tiny leaves. So these these leaves here. Sorry, just shove the sofa that you're leaning on. These little round leaves, um, they're about the size of sort of my an adult fingerprint. Um, but the, the new leaf, the new growth had gone gone right down to kind of like, I don't know, the size of a little pea. They were really tiny and they were so they were long and trailing down to here. Um, so it was alive and growing, but not in the best way. So the other day I did a bit of a stock take actually. I haven't really mentioned this yet because it's just been over the past week since the last video, but um, I've been doing a big declutter. Um, I've cleared out an, our entire garage, um, done a lot of tip runs, charity shop drop-offs, um, rehoming things, trying to sell things, just to make lots of space. I crave space. Um, but yeah, that carried through into my plant collection as well. So I've been giving a few plants away to local nearby friends, um, selling a few as well, um, and just not getting rid of loads of plants. I'd say about 20, probably. Um, but yeah, just plants that aren't particularly loving this house that I know will do better um, in a different environment and with different people. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll go through I'll go through that in more detail another day and show you what I've been doing with that. But it, it feels really good. Why was I telling you that? Yeah, so during that declutter, as I went round the house, just kind of pulling off things that I knew needed to go, I also addressed where some of the plants were were then living, and that's when I decided to call it a day with the position this one I've been in and give it what it really needs. So I have now got it in a much brighter spot, but also I gave it some some TLC. So I trimmed back all the all the leggy growth with the tiny leaves. I've just trimmed it and cut it down quite far to the base. Not not right down to the base, but as you can see. Um, but I just trimmed off all the all the stems that had basically the tiny tiny little leaves. Um, and what else? Um, 
I feel like there was something else I had to do to it. It's quite, um, it's quite pale. Um, I think it should be a darker green than this and it just, it just needs more light. So hopefully in time, um, it will produce leaves that, that are a lovely luscious green. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not looking too bad. Um, and I think any new growth now will hopefully have larger leaves and I'll make sure that I'm feeding it as well. But yeah, the, the extra light will be the main thing. Um, I think it's a beautiful plant. I've always admired this. I think I used to have one way back a few years ago in the kind of uh, pregnancy baby brain stage in the old house. Um, and I had a few peperomia that I that I absolutely loved. And then I didn't, they didn't all survive with, with the house move. As I said, I had to get rid of a lot of plants and I had to give away some of my peperomia as well. Um, but yeah, I'd built up like a small but very prized collection of peperomia at the time. Um, and I had them all in one room. Funnily enough, as I was saying about my, my daughter's name, we had a, a tiny little kind of box room for her, um, which she never slept in because um, she we moved out of there when she was quite tiny. But it, it was nice to have some of her baby things in there. And I spent a lot of my pregnancy time in there, actually. And I loved painting it. I, I, I decorated it and made it into a lovely little space, um, painted it um uh, a lovely primrose yellow and white and had a lot of lovely plants in there and yeah all of the plants in there were peperomia which felt really nice um it was really fun but yeah this is one that I I didn't get to bring with me so I reinvested in one I can't even remember where I got this from or when but um it was a good few months back um yeah so I've always admired this plant I think it's really really pretty I, I love the aesthetic of this one it's got very thin leaves they're kind of waxy but not really thick not super succulent but um they're not papery um and a little bit frilly rounded and yeah it's quite a traily one um and I think this would actually grow up the trunks of trees um, in the wild. So rather than being a traily down plant, it would actually climb. A lot of peperomia are epiphytic, but I don't think we view them that way because we see them um, very differently in shops. Um, but yeah, I'll talk more about different groups of peperomia a bit later on or uh, tomorrow. But um, yeah, I love this one and I have high hopes that it will, um, it will be happier. <laughs> so I'm very sorry that I did not give it what it needed and I have learned that I, I will be basing my plant positioning much more on what that plant needs rather than just purely I think it looks nice in that place <laughs> I mean I generally do do that and I have done that for a while but I don't know why I clung on to this that position for this plant for so long I knew it wasn't what it needed I knew peperomia needed brighter light I think I just had some vain hope that it would manage and it did it didn't die it did put out new growth but over time just seeing that new growth get smaller and smaller it, it made me realize no that's just that's just silly let's move on with that <laughs> right next one that's better I just had to go and get into something a bit thinner because I was really sweltering in that jumper um right who's next let's go with this one this is such a beaut. I absolutely love this one. This is a Peperomia orbifolia. Um, I had one of these before, which was variegated, and I think it had fungal rot type thing. It was not a pest. It was not in a good way, and I had to had to throw it out eventually. But when I had it, I I looked at it so frequently. I kept it in my bedroom windowsill, and I just would wake up to see that one first, and it was just so beautiful. I will hopefully um, get another one someday. When I find one that I like the look of that's really healthy and, and beautiful and a nice shape, I will I will reinvest because they're gorgeous. Um, but yeah, this one is so beautiful. Um, I actually can't remember where I bought this from. Yes, I can. I'm pretty sure it was my local home base, actually. And I was not planning to do that, but I just saw it there and it was so, so healthy and so beautiful. Um, I just needed this one. <laughs> I love I love really rounded leaves. I think these are so gorgeous and the color is so pea green. They're so solid these leaves. They're they're very shiny and smooth, but they are actually a little bit ribbed as well. Um but yeah, this particular plant, it just it's so healthy and vibrant and I just really really kind of prize it. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I, I've said that a lot of times, sorry. Um, but yeah, I think this is one of my favourite peperomia and probably fa uh, favourite plants. Um, so this one I've had for, I don't know, about a month or two maximum. Um, and it's fine. It has had spider mites on it, but they were really easy to deal with and I'm just keeping an eye on that. And 
think it had thrips but just a few and again it just seemed quite easy to deal with because the leaves are so big and solid and uh, well spaced out and shiny it's just really easy to wash them and get everything off it doesn't have like really big grooves that things can hide in um, or pet like it doesn't have any sheaths um, or kind of hidden bits like some plants do so it's just very easy to clean and kind of keep an eye on um, so I don't feel too stressed about the fact that it had those pests to deal with because it's just been as I said it's really easy to to deal with so just keeping an eye on it but it's it's remained looking really new <laughs> um it does gather dust quite quickly so giving it a quick like dash under the shower or, or the the tap um just really makes it sparkly again um and um yeah it's just it's staying really healthy which i think i i i'm almost surprised that it is because i because i tried so much um to keep the the previous one the variegated one i tried so hard to keep that healthy and try to rescue it and it was a little bit soul destroying to try so hard and it it just die um it was just not in a happy state and i i think it just came with a problem and so I wasn't going to win with that one, but I loved it so much. And to have it die was just like, ah, oh, what have I done wrong? <laughs> and so I almost felt like, oh, should I buy this? Is this going to, is this going to go the same way? But, um, I think this plant is helping to me to get past that, <laughs> that little worry because it's just been really, really fine. It's really healthy and it's really, really beautiful. And yeah, it just continues to be gorgeous. Um, I don't think it's put out much new growth since I've had it. I think that leaf is actually one that's come since I since I got it and it's now getting bigger. Um, but I mean, peperomia aren't particularly fast growing. It's not like they're going to give you a new leaf every other week. It takes time with these guys. They're, they're sort of in it for the long haul. Um, so that's fine. But yeah, it's one of my real favourites and it's doing really well. Um, this lives on my bedroom windowsill um, in the same spot the other one did, actually. And... I just love seeing this first thing in the morning. It's so green. It's such a gorgeous shape. So it's very lovely. Okay, next I have a couple of Peperomia clusiifolia. Is that how you say it? Yeah, clusiifolia. I've shown you these before um, in one of my maybe second or third video that I ever made because I had bought this and then divided it up and I was giving them away at the plant swap in Bristol um, and I did keep back a couple, uh, one because I loved it and another one because my son really loved it and that's been living in his room. This is his one in a bit of a whoa spangly pot <laughs> and that one's doing just fine and this is my one which again doing just fine it's kind of growing very much i have not i was going to say very much in one direction i have not been turning it um it's been on a bookcase with light coming from one side um and yeah i haven't really been rotating it as you can tell because look at the back <laughs> but i i don't really mind i mean i could i could start rotating it and see if it starts coming this way a bit but to be honest, it's viewed very much from the front, and as long as the plant is happy and healthy and doesn't mind that, then I don't have an issue with it because I'm appreciating all the all the front view of it, so that's fine. I think this one is a bit more evenly spaced, and probably it has been moved. It's been rotated almost by accident um, because we've moved the plants around in my son's room a lot. Um, I've done a lot of rejigging in there from time to time, um, just general cleaning and tidying because um, it gets really messy in there and really, really full and cluttered. So um, yeah, that's just, it just has meant that it's gradually just got turned without really even needing to put effort into turning it. Um, but yeah, so this came from um, home base as well. Um, they do seem to just occasionally have a really nice stock of um slightly different peperomia and i don't really go looking in there i'm usually going in there for like paint or a plastic basket or something um but yeah i have i have had some very good plants from there and it's very hit and miss um and i i don't really use them as a main plant point but i have i have occasionally bought plants from there that are doing really well and have been a real good purchase um but I would prefer to buy plants either online from a small plant business or, um, yeah, a local 
a local actual plant shop if I can, when I can. Um, but yeah, so I got this as one plant. Um, it was quite reduced, uh, which was good. Um, and it was quite um, packed together. Actually, I think I bought two eventually. Um, they were they were reduced. I went back for another one. Um, so they were quite packed together and I divided them up because I prefer being able to see into the plant and let the light in and let it breathe. And I like being able to see in between the leaves. I felt like it was so packed together that I couldn't tell if it was okay down there like it's um I've got another one like that to show you um yeah I just felt like I couldn't take good care of it if I couldn't see in between um all the stems and the leaves um like to see down whether there were pests there or whether anything was kind of I don't know just not very fresh or rotting away or anything so I divided them up partly for that reason and partly to spread the love and be able to give plants away um to other people and they they got snapped up at the at the plant swap so they are happily living somewhere else um but yeah i think they're beautiful they're a, they're a very large leaved peperomia there aren't i don't think there are many many peperomia that get much larger than this um oh look there's a thrip joys there is an actual adult thrip i just spotted a load of black poos and very obvious um thrip damage so I'll just show you here look so it smells funny like herby <laughs> actually having said that I did read today that um in a lot of countries where these are native plants people do actually use them um as a herbal remedy and in some cooking don't do that yourself with any of your peperomia because obviously we have not tried and tested that in this country and we don't have the knowledge of which ones are suitable so do not eat your peperomia um they are considered to be non-toxic on the whole and therefore you know recommended as a kind of child safe um and pet safe plant to have around um obviously still don't just let your kids and animals eat them on purpose and try and avoid it because i'm sure it could still you know not be great for them but yeah they are considered to be one not to worry about um they're not toxic um but yeah i just think that's really interesting i'd love to know more about how people have used those um as remedies and things but yeah going back to the thrip um issue um so that brown patch there is where they've eaten away and as they've eaten they've left their little black poos and <laughs> and there is actually a black adult thrip in the sort of it's like a curled edge I'm just gonna see if I can show you yeah there we go look can you see that black speck I know it's not very clear but that is a thrip so um if you don't like bugs being squished look away there we go I've just squashed that one and I will give this one a thorough check and a wash and a, well I'll give it a shower and a thorough a thorough thorough wash um and spray it down but yeah, I don't feel too bothered about it because I've got I've got a few thrips here and there that I've been dealing with recently. I've just um I've just been quite on it. Like as soon as I see thrips, I'm just like, right, get you in the shower, get you under the sink, um, give it a thorough wash and then do the horticultural soap and then go back to it. And I think with a plant like this, like I was saying about the other one, the obtusifolia, um, being large leaves and quite um quite smooth and quite well spread out, it it's not the worst kind of plant to deal with for, for pests. So I'd still prefer not to. <laughs> I don't enjoy dealing with pests. I'd rather be spending my time on other things, but I don't feel like such a terrible fear and dread of dealing with it as I first did with some with some thrippy plants. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, so these have got a really beautiful large leaf. A lot of peperomia are much smaller leaf than this. And um, the shape is really interesting because it kind of, it gets, it starts off very narrow. It's got a real sort of thin, narrow neck. I'll show you from behind, it's a bit easier. But yeah, really narrow at the base. And then they get wider, really wide, and then suddenly a bit more pointed. I think it's clearer with that one, actually. So yeah, quite an unusual shape. Um, but also the colouring is just amazing. Um, so kind of the slight variegation towards the edges of the plant and then the real pink tinge. So yeah, this one is called Jelly, Clusiaifolia Jelly. So that's fun. I, I haven't actually seen other types of Clusiaifolia and I'd never seen them or heard of them when I first picked this one up. So that was fun. Fun to find a different peperomia locally that 
just popped up into my awareness so yeah so um right I'll have to deal with that one <laughs> either tonight or in the morning um that's fine but yeah so that's that's that one how forgetful am I I I've just put the lights on and now you'll be able to see much clearer <laughs> Oh dear. I do wish I was filming this in daylight because um, you'd be able to see the foliage much more beautifully. So I will um, probably just pop in some daylight photos of each one so that you can appreciate them a bit better. Um, but yeah, I don't like harsh bright lighting and so I never really think to turn on these, these ceiling lights. Um, I just find them a bit overwhelming and after a while they give them a bit, a bit of a headache. Um, I was I was decluttering in my husband's workroom for him the other day and yeah, I went in there during the evening and put the main light on. And after about half an hour of clearing out loads of my old artwork, I was just like, oh my gosh, my head is throbbing. My my muscles here were just really hurty and my eyes were aching. And I just left the room and was like, oh my gosh. And I, then I realised, oh, the bright light. I should not have been doing that. Anyway, um, so yes, I am a fusspot about lighting. Um, so... I'm going to get back to showing you some more of the peperomia now, and, um, yeah, that. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to show you a little, um, several plants at once, because I thought they were all the same thing, but I was wrong. So... Um, when I was at the plant swap, there was a free table, which is very exciting, um, and um, I spotted this plant on there. There was just one of them. I'd never seen one before, and um, I just thought from a distance it was really beautiful. It was traily, little round leaves, completely up my street, um, and it was this, which I believe I've shown you before, probably several times. Um, so it was this. It's beautiful. I love it. It has quite pinky stems, very, very rounded leaves, but not completely rounded. They do actually, most of them go to a bit of a point. Um, it's funny because it's kind of got, I don't know if it's been planted as several different, slightly related, sorry, very related, but slightly different, um, like variations of the same plant. Because they're all the same size and shape. But one of them is very, very pale and always has been and has a slight, um, there's like a marbly bit there. So that stem is marbly and pale. And then this pe this stem is just, just pale. Um, and then pretty much the rest of them are all this deeper green. Um, and yeah, when I first got it, I really didn't know what it was. And I was kind of thinking, is this a type of peperomia? Is this peperomia pepper spot? And I, but I thought, no, it, it can't be because I'm sure. So I did have pepper spot, a really little plant of it um, a few years ago. And it, it didn't grow very quickly as peperomia don't. Um, and yeah, I lost it, but I loved it. I, I loved it before I had it. I thought it was beautiful um, and I've always wanted another one. And so I was Googling around and asking a few people in various planty groups and no one really seemed to know what it was. Um, but the main, the main consensus, the general consensus was that it was peperomia, pepper spot, if anything. And I was just very jubilant that it was a peperomia. A new to me peperomia, one that I... Um, completely love the look of and that it was it was a freebie and um it's been fairly well behaved it's it's actually been pretty trouble free it has been growing there's a lot of new growth so um anything that is trailing down is what was already there and anything that is upright is the newer growth so that yeah there's quite a bit actually there's some hidden around here little stems coming upwards this one here, that's all new. That was not there when I brought it home. And there's new growth right at the top still coming. Um, and this was actually longer. Um, it was a bit almost on the straggly side when I got it, like a bit messy in a in a very beautiful way. Um, but yeah, these, these were longer vines. Um, so I've trimmed all of these to this kind of length here. And then I um, planted up those, those trimmings. Um, I think I put them straight into soil. Yeah, put them straight into soil in a little pot and I'm going to show you that now. <clears throat> so 
so that's this one so they they took fine i could tell after a little while that they were rooted and they started putting out new growth that little leaf i've just i am a bit clumsy and i've just I've knocked that off in transit over here from the kitchen um but yeah that one lives on the kitchen windowsill this one has had pests because the kitchen windowsill just seems to be um yeah a bit of a paradise for pests at the moment which is quite annoying um but it's it's fine these are not damaged um particularly badly um but yeah this has got new growth so this is just a baby plant the same as same as this one it's a nice time on one because it's really cute you know i could eventually give it away or swap it for something but to be honest i'm just enjoying the success of that propagation um, with a peppermint that i hadn't had before and um i just like seeing it i like little plants and it's happy over there so i'm keeping it for now um but yeah so i thought these were possibly peperomia pepper spot but through doing a bit of research actually just a couple of days ago um i'm pretty sure it's not um because i bought this one really cheaply kind of as a rescue it wasn't reduced but it was in a bit of a bad state at little and i just thought oh you're lovely and you're a peperomia and it is peperomia pepper spot <laughs> um so this one is much shinier much thicker waxier leaves almost domed kind of leaves and um yeah they're just really rounded like a coin but not actually flat um really green um Oh my gosh. I'm just going to check what I found. I think I just found scale on it. Not a lot. And they were dead. But then I have cleaned this, so that might be why. Um... Hmm. Time will tell to see if anything else appears. Um, but yeah, this um, it had much longer vines, um, but they weren't. They, you know, when a plant just isn't looking great, like it's got a lot of little dropping off leaves, like in the base, and they were kind of looking a bit rotten in places. Um, I think I would like to repot this. Actually, I just decided, and I think I probably did want to do that a while ago, and then other things happened, and I completely forgot I wanted to do that. But it's actually in quite a big pot for the size of plant. Um, Peperomia do quite enjoy being a little bit root bound. And this is really moist compost. I don't like this soil. It feels really claggy. And I think that's part of the problem. I think that it's just got some leaves that are really, really close to the soil. And they're just, they're just dying off on contact, going black. Um, anyway, this as far as I, as sure as I can be, this is peperomia pepper spot. So very rounded, um, very succulent. And dealing with a thrip. <laughs> Poor plant. Ugh. Oh well. Um, anyway, yes, yeah, so I trimmed back some of the, the longest bits. And since I did that, it's actually looking a lot better. There's lots of new growth. Um, so just give you a nice close up there. Um, here we go, lots of little baby leaves. They're tiny and adorable. Um, and they are on the ends of most, mostly, most stems. Um, again, I'll put in a close up of those um, later. But yeah, this is a lovely plant. I'm really happy to have it, but it, it just isn't quite there yet with being completely happy. I'd like to see it a little bit more um, settled in and a bit more comfortable on its substrate. <laughs> I just, I do think this is a really big pot for peperomia of this size and yeah the substrate itself is just just gross not a fan um so I'll report that one shortly but yeah so peperomia pepper spot so that led me to then think hold on because that definitely that <laughs> I'm pretty pretty definite that that is pepper spot please do confirm if you know it there's another look just to be sure I'm pretty certain um so if that's peppermint with pepper spot, this can't be pepper spot because it's very different. It's much more pointed and the leaves feel very different and they're not as thick and succulent. So I kind of accidentally came across uh, Peperomia Ruby Cascade on Nick Pileggi's, um YouTube channel um, the other day. 
Um, I, I really love his channel and I always go back to his channel. Um, sometimes I take a break and explore other channels, but I always go back to his channel. I have done for years. Um, and I just really enjoy um, his style and his, um, his personality and his enthusiasm and yeah, his whole channel is just brilliant. Um, yeah, so I discovered Ruby Cascade in amongst all his peperomia and I'm pretty sure that's what this is. It does have pinky stems and it did look like his one. So I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And if so, that is so cool and such a find and what an amazing thing to put on a on a free table. I can only assume that whoever was giving it away either um, had another one and didn't need it um, and, you know, taken these as, as cuttings or didn't get on with the plant because peperomia can be a little bit niggly um you know maybe they hadn't quite like got to know this plant yet and had taken against it because it had had some sort of trouble um as as we all do with various plants um or maybe they didn't like it maybe they'd been given it and it wasn't their cup of tea but i mean there could be so many reasons why they didn't want this plant but i am so grateful whoever you were <laughs> Um, I'm so grateful this plant grateful for this plant thank you it's it's a real gift and I love it and I'm treasuring it and and it's beautiful and it's fun and I do just I'm curious about the mystery of yeah it's just the fact that it's got um some some strands that are variegated so maybe maybe there is just a variegated ruby cascade that you can get and they've put that in there as well or maybe it's just a little mutant one. So that's what's going on with, with these guys. And yeah, that's my current thought process. Do correct me if I'm wrong. I am not an expert. I just really love these plants and I'm learning all the time as we all are. So um, yeah, if you have an opinion on this, do share it. And if you have either of these plants and you think it's something else, then let me know. Um, and if you've looked after this plant before or you've had issues with this plant before, feel free to comment and let us know your experience and we can all, um, learn from each other mm -mm. now we have a little cutie one this is a peperomia hope this was from hutch house plants uh back at the end of the autumn i think um it hasn't really grown much since i got it but i do think this is a particularly slow growing peperomia, peperomia. do correct me if i'm wrong about that um this is in fairly bright light yeah it's in a window it doesn't get burning bright sun but it, it does get bright light so um that's quite happy i've actually only recently moved it there though it was on a bookshelf and now it's in the windowsill so yeah i think it should start to grow especially as, as spring comes along um we'll see how that does but i'd love to see some new growth on this but even without new growth it's just lovely it's such a cute little it looks like a little cartoony plant i love how i did say i do love really rounded leaves on plants um and these are almost full circles they're so cute they're really satisfyingly solid they're quite flat um, with a little bit of a groove. Um, you can see actually the little kind of slight veining or striping. Um, but yeah, they are a very solid leaf. You can see a little bit better on the back of them. There's like that, that ridge along the center where the stem, where the petiole joins on. Um, but yeah, it's it's healthy so far. I haven't encountered any problems with it. It didn't die off when my other ones did <laughs> due to lack of watering. It's in some quite nice substrate, actually. Um, and yeah, it's it's a beautiful plant. This is a hybrid. Um, so this is Peperomia quadrifolia crossed with uh, Peperomia depiana. Um, and it's beautiful. It's a thing of its own now. It's really, cu really cute. Um, and yeah i would love to have a fuller one of these um so i might end up buying a more mature one at some point um i will be waiting to see how this one grows um but i would happily buy another one and like put it together um actually that brings me on to a, a valid point about peperomia that they they just aren't big plants they're never they're never going to compete with a big monstera um or a massive calathea you know they're just not a big plant um they they tend to grow low down or climbing a tree uh, or between rock crevices and they are just just built that way they have very little root systems um and um a lot of them don't have big leaves um but even the ones that do they just they're they're just quite compact they tend to stay quite compact so if you want a bigger peperomia um 
they have certain limitations you know some of them do get longer like you just saw with the peperomia um pepper spot and the ruby cascade you know some of them are more traily um but yeah the ones that aren't traily they're just not going to get into bigger plants um and so if you want them to be to be a bigger plant and take up more space you are going to need more of them and you can you can plant them together and you can make a bushier plant um but it's it's yeah it's never going to be like a tall massive um massive plant so that's just how they are and i think that's really nice because it means that they're easier to keep um you don't have to find a big space for peperomia um peperomia are never going to take up a really big amount of space unless you were to do like a bed of peperomia which would be fun um i have thought it's quite interesting how a lot of us keep our um uh, house plants very separate to one another and you know you have one plant in one pot and another plant in another pot and you can arrange them however you like but they are very separate and you tend to have like one thing and then another thing um and variation is is quite a appreci an appreciated aesthetic and i appreciate that a lot i like having one shape next to a very different type of shape like something spiky next to something rounded or something really um blousy next to something that's a very big solid leaf um and and that is really lovely but i do often think you know in the wild wouldn't it be oh, wouldn't it be nice to just go and see peperomia in the wild and go traipsing through some forest and see them all bunched up at the bottom of a tree or climbing up or kind of like filling the, the crevice between some rocks and i think that would be really fun to do in your house if you had the space so rather than having several different pots of different things you could just have like a whole trough of these <laughs> wouldn't that be really nice you could totally do that if if that's what you liked if you wanted to have less variation and just have a real impact in a different way um to just have lots of one type of plant in one place i think that would be so cool and i i've thought about this quite a, a bit lately that i would love to do that with something at some point soon i just haven't decided what and when and where <laughs> but um yeah, I just, I like the idea of having lots of something, um, creating a real um, kind of hit of of that one plant. Who knows, maybe it will be this one. Maybe you'll see me plant up 10 of these. <laughs> I doubt it, but it would be fun to do something. Um, anyway, so yeah, this one has been really easy to look after. It doesn't seem to dry out very quickly. I, it does store, obviously, a lot of um, moisture in those solid leaves. Um, and I don't think I've ever let this one dry out very much. I haven't kept it in too much wetness, but it hasn't really badly dried out since I've had it. So it's just seemed fairly healthy. I'm wondering if um, this is a newer leaf. Um, it is a bit curly, but it is still solid. Ah, there's a thrip on it. I did wonder if it might be because of a pest. There is a young juvenile pale thrip on the underside of that one. But I can't see any more. And I don't see why one little thrip would make that leaf leaf curl over so much. It's not it's not damaged apart from that. Oops, no it is. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ah right, now it might be worth checking if I can propagate from this leaf. Um it doesn't have any stem attached, so it might not be possible. If you have propagated Peperomia Hope, will you please comment and tell me um how it's worked out for you i would like to do that i was not planning to do that with this plant i was not planning to to um to trim this but that was me just bending it too far um anyway i don't know why those leaves were curling over because it's not like it's riddled with thrips um you know how new plant new leaves emerge and you can tell they're battling a pest because they are you know unfurling and they've already got damage but there's just there's nothing else on this plant um i can see there's nothing else on this plant at all so i don't know if that was just a slightly newer leaf i i feel like it might be because it's smaller and it just looks younger like it's more shiny than the others they go almost a little bit matte eventually but when they're younger they are a bit shiny shinier so yeah oh i'm sorry i did not mean to pull you off um yeah i don't know there's much more to say about that other than um that was very silly of me <laughs> but we'll see we'll see what can be done
All right, next I'm going to show you this little beauty. Now, I will check its name and pop it in because I cannot remember, but I do have it written down somewhere. So this is the little Pepper Amy that I brought home. Oh, it was so cute. Teeny tiny little baby um, in a tiny pot from the Bristol Plant Swap. And I loved it so much. And it was just, it was weeny. It was so, so cute. Um, and I kept it for a while in a tiny little pot on a shelf in a brightish light. Um, and it did put out like a new leaf and it was teeny. And then eventually when I was getting into terrariums, I thought, Ooh, what can I put in here? And I decided I would put the this little peperomia in there. Um, and it has grown so much considering that they are slow growers and yeah um and it was absolutely tiny micro plant i think it's doing really well um so this has been hanging in my kitchen window i did show it to you the other day in i think in the previous video when i was showing you some stuff there um yeah it's got some pilea glauca in there as well which is getting <laughs> quite tall for the space so that could do with a trim or we'll just see if it kind of finds its way around the <laughs> around there um but um, this helped me a great deal, actually, seeing how well this peperomia was doing in here. Uh, I have not opened this since I made it probably about, I don't know, three months ago. About that. I've not opened it since I made it and it's doing really well. You can see it's got condensation. Um, there's no rot of any kind. So I'm pretty happy with that. This little jar was about a pound in... The re not the range, the works, the works. <laughs> um, and I did get some more the other day actually. So if you've got one near you, you might be might be able to get one. Um, so it's just like a jam jar, but it's got it's plastic. Um, it's got this little um loop so you can hang it up. Um, and you could put anything in there, but um, it it called out to me that it needed to be a little hanging terrarium and I'm really glad that I did that um so if you are going to do one yourself I would just advise you to kind of make a little barrier in the lid so rather than planting straight into the lid um to kind of make a little cap to go in the lid um uh, because if you plant straight into the lid and fill the lid up and there's substrate right to the edge of the the lid when you then screw this on um it's just going to grate and grind against um against the soil and stuff so it won't close properly and you'll have a problem with um it not being completely sealed and maybe the lid falling off and maybe the contents falling out so um what i did actually this one you can't really see it so well but um i've got another one which, which i'll show you in a minute um i I think for the first one, I just kind of made it work. I just kept tweaking it until it until it did close, but it was very laborious and I wasn't sure if it was going to work and I wouldn't want to repeat that process. It was just really finickety, really faffy. Um, but um, yeah, the next one, having realised that, I thought, OK, I'm going to change how I do it. So I just got some foil and I had a large a large plastic lid from like a vitamin pot or something and it was smaller. Um, its circumference was smaller than this silver lid. So I just kind of wrapped the foil around that and made like a mould and then took away the lid. So then I had a little foil dish that was just a little bit narrower than this. So it could sit in the lid and there would be a, a gap for the plastic um, narrower edge of the see-through bit to screw into um, without barging the contents around or grinding against any loose soil. So that's what worked for me. So, um, yeah. It, and they've they've been so successful um we've got one one more currently but i'm gonna make more um so yeah that's a really lovely little pepperoni it's very purpley it was more reddish when i got it but now it's quite a lot more purpley i think it actually it's much redder underneath um and quite sort of veinated and patterny um I'll try and get you a daylight photo, um, as with the others. But yeah, it's a really, a really cool little thing. It hangs up in the windowsill of the kitchen and gets a lot of light. And it is a really happy way for the peperomia to be. That's what I was going to tell you. So seeing how successful this has been with this peperomia kind of gave me hope with peperomia in general because I was, I was just feeling a bit glum about my peperomia. Um, even like about a week or two ago, I was just like, oh, do I not get peperomia after all? Because, you know, I'd fallen in love with them initially and then I'd kind of 
gone through having a baby and moving house and losing a few and um, not knowing much about pests and then um, when we moved here I gradually started getting a few more again and thinking oh I'd kind of forgotten how much I loved them but let's get more and then yeah over Christmas just losing losing quite a few little baby ones and feeling <laughs> feeling like an idiot and thinking well that was just stupid and what a waste of those plants and also I, I'm meant to love these plants so why was I so rubbish at looking after them but I have told you how and why that happened and I've learned from it so <laughs> so yeah um but seeing this made me think oh this one has been so happy in there and I haven't had to water it once in months and it's growing and it's amazing and it's happy so therefore the peperomia that I lost that that were underwatered um if they'd had this kind of treatment they'd probably be fine too so if I was to have those again I would put them into into a glass or plastic container I would give you know give them a sealed environment and that would be okay so that got me excited about doing more with the peperomia that I, that I still have that are at risk of <laughs> drying out um, being in smaller pots so I'm going to show you those now I have a couple of peperomia here that are small and young and not exactly in the best condition so this one is the beautiful um, Peperomia verticillata red log that I got from Harriet's plants and uh, it's it's lovely it arrived in great condition it's been growing fine but I have taken quite a few cuttings from this um, for various uh, terrariums and some of those I've given away with a snippet of this in there um, and yeah but I didn't I didn't want to snip all of it up I wanted some plant to, re to be remaining growing um, but it's it is quite slow to grow and this one has been very brave with some underwaterings and it has made it through <laughs> where I lost the other ones this one has kept going um but it is a, it's a bit weedy and a bit oh that's interesting there we go yeah it's kind of depleted a little bit because I took cuttings from it and um it's just not growing back particularly quickly because they don't grow back particularly quickly um so it's not like it's a full beautiful plant to look at um so what I'm thinking about this one is to just get probably the remainder of it into either into a terrarium as it is um or to just snip off each stem and put them in separate terrariums little ones or get them snipped down and go into a terrarium together um but definitely not to stay in this size of pot as it is because it's losing leaves so I just don't think it's that happy I want to give it the best chance to be happy and to not lose the plant completely so I'm just trying to sort of um limit limit the damage and um give it the best chance so I'm thinking of giving this a similar treatment to this um, little one that I just showed you. Okay, so um, I could get it into a similar pot, but I've got a choice of pots. I've got quite a few, <laughs> I've quite a few containers to choose from. Um, so I'm going to look at those. Um, so yeah, that's one that I want to deal with today to get into a different environment. But it is a lovely plant. I think it's beautiful. I love, I love the um, the pink stems and the undersides of it, um, which I've shown you before. I know if you've seen previous videos, you've seen this one before. Um, but the actual top of the leaf is so veiny and beautiful. Sorry about the poor focus right now. Will you focus? No. I love this plant. I think it's lovely. So I'm just gonna gonna give it a different different environment. So there's that one to work with in a minute. So here is that same plant in a in a different one of these containers. This one's got some Fotonia in it too and some more of the Pilea glauca. Um, it's very hard to show you these because of the, the curved clear plastic. The camera doesn't want to focus, but you can just about see. Um, when I checked this out recently, I realised that it had grown a lot since I put it in there. There's loads of roots coming from all over. <laughs> it's very happy. There's roots coming out from all over the the red stem. Every joint place like every tier of leaves has got <laughs> little white strandy roots coming out from it you can see them there so um it's obviously a very good environment for it to be rooty and very nice and humid oh and actually this one shows you my little <laughs> my little makeshift tin foil um kind of 
container at the bottom so that fits within the lid nicely and it just keeps everything away from the edge of the the screwing part um so yeah this one's happy and i'm not i'm not going to do anything with this at the moment um i don't think i think it's fine in there for now and i'll just keep an eye on it um if i need to trim it or take the fatonia out or anything then i will um sorry that's just unnecessary hook um yeah so that's just another little terrarium that's working out really well and that has fed into my idea that i should be putting more of my smallest peperomia into containers um not all of them i love seeing i love seeing them out in the open and i feel like i can appreciate them visually a bit easier when they're not in a terrarium but it's if it's either that or lose the plant um then i definitely prefer to put it in a container um so this is the other peperomia verticillata now i'm a bit confused i don't know if these are just um just variations um because i've seen a lot of this one around lately and goes by the same name but it's very very different it's got a more of a rosette to it um and it's much bigger leaves that this one's going to fall off i wonder if i could propagate that it's not dehydrated but again this plant isn't very happy it did have it did have a real forest of leaves all the way to the soil and these have just been falling off gradually um which is a shame so again i want to stop that from getting any worse so i'm going to pop this into a container today um i did originally buy this to maybe put into terrariums anyway i was going to do individual stems of it um i'm wondering if this is struggling with thrips as well wouldn't it be nice if thrips weren't a thing these are really solid leaves actually you, it's hard to tell until you're touching them but they're actually really quite bowl like but very thick so that's another one i'm dealing with in a minute um oh a different peperomia to show you so this is um this is quite a famous one this is um i was gonna say turtle vine but it's not turtle vine it's um string of turtles um so this is peperomia prostrata in a teeny tiny terrarium i did this a few months ago and i um this is from um michelle at the plant swap um i'll put her is it a small world a small world of rising are you um i'll put you up here but she gave me um the peperomia prostrata prostrata at the bristol plant swap and it was so lovely but it was in a teeny tiny pot and um because it, I mean, it was even smaller than like even smaller than that size pot and i found it really difficult to keep that hydrated enough um which is my fault but there we go um so i did eventually lose the mother plant to um to thrips and underwatering but i'm so glad i still have this little string of it i mean i love tiny things and a tiny little bottle terrarium is is adorable <clears throat> I'll take a photo and show you this one but um yeah it's grown since it was in there and it's doing fine no sign of decay um so that's fine i'm not going to be like harvesting this any <laughs> anytime soon for cuttings it is it is still very little and i'm just appreciating it as it is um but i'm i'm glad it's happy and it kind of like rescued that plant um so i was thinking the other day oh such a shame that i lost that and i'll hopefully reinvest in that again sometime and then i remember this little tiny tiny bottle <laughs> so that's that one um and uh, another testament to the fact that peperomia obviously rather like being in bottles <laughs> um so if you're thinking about something to put in a terrarium try a peperomia <laughs> i don't know about the bigger ones um i guess i mean for something like this you would have to have quite a large container to get around that um but also i just don't think it needs it i think it's happy with like the air humidity um i just i don't think it would would need it to thrive because it's it's been fine i think it's just the smaller ones I'm, I'm having trouble with um so i think i was going to say, going to say i think that's all of the ones to show you but it is not there are a couple more so here we have uh peperomia scandens variegata i had wanted this for a long time and um then it was in a very cheap supermarket 
um, for hardly any money <laughs> and I bought a couple of them. The f no, I didn't. Hold on. I bought one and then I think I was given one. That's right. I, I was given one at the plant swap. That was it. And then I also found it cheaply in a supermarket. So I bought that one as well. Now, they're both doing fine, but I think this one's been a bit singed in the window and is not so happy there. So um, there might be another reason for those brown patches, actually. Um, I have had to deal with thrips, so I think some of it is thrip damage. Anyway, I have these two plants. They have both grown a lot since I got them. Um, I had them for a few months, both of them similar timing. They've both put out... Oh, rotters. There are thrips on this one. You're going to be really, really sick of the sound of thrips with me today, aren't you? Um, I'm sorry. Yet more thrips. I can see two on the tops of these. Uh, where are you? There and there. And there's probably more. So tomorrow I'm going to be very busy with the shower and with some soap. That's so annoying. Ugh. Um, what was I saying? Yes, they have both put out plenty of new growth since I since I got them. They've they've filled out a bit and they have definitely got longer. They're both currently putting out new leaves at the moment. This one less so. I say this one this one's looking a bit more ropey with, with some damage on it. This one is looking much prettier um, and has a bit more new growth than the other one. So um yeah, this is all recent. Uh, it tends to be much more kind of li limey green when it's put out the new growth and then it kind of fades to this more like white and green eventually. But the, yeah, the new growth is much more uh, creamy and yellowy um, as a background. So the variegated bits are much more creamy yellowy. There's a new little leaf right there. I see it against my top a bit easier actually. There's a new little baby leaf. Um, and another one down inside there. There it is. And yeah. Just a few little growth points there, really. Um, this is quite a waxy one. I'm gonna pop in a photo of this that I took the other day. It's in my um, it's in my bedroom on a windowsill, and when certain light hits it, it's just like glistens. It's a very it's a very succulent leaf, and it obviously contains a lot of moisture. And when the sun is on it, it can be so translucent and it, actually, even in this lighting, um, the camera won't pick this up, but my eyes can see that it is very, very glittery. How does that happen? The backs of the leaves and the fronts of the leaves, they're just twinkling. Um, teeny tiny little pinpoints of of light reflecting. Um, it, it does look like they're coated in the finest glitter, um, which is really cool. That's quite a big leaf there, isn't it, compared to the others? Um, but yeah, um, so when the light hits it, it's just amazing. It's like really silvery all over and really, really beautiful. Um, I love this peperomia. If this was not a peperomia, I would really love it. I just love the visuals of this. I, I love the colouring and the variegation. The variegation is not is not like crazy. It's not crazily patterned or like um, camouflagey pattern. It's just it's just quite subtly variegated and I, I really love it. I love I love this leaf, leaf shape. It's so simple but so elegant. It's just, it's just perfect. And the trailiness of it, like you couldn't really get much better than that for me. It's just so, so me. This is a, a very me plant. And I love it. Um, I was really, really, really delighted to find this at the plant swap. Um, and it was, it's a real favourite. And then to have another one is really cool. So on my job to do today is to pot these together. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> long, long, long intro to that with lots of distraction. But basically, I want to put these two together. There's no reason why not to. I don't know why I didn't when I first got them. I probably, I think I was just watching and waiting because I've never, never grown them before. And they'd come from different places. I think I was just watching and waiting to see how they did, see how they grew, see how they behaved and how they coped with this house. And um, yeah, see what they did next. And they have both continued to grow. Um, so I just don't see any reason to keep them apart anymore. And it would be easier for me to have um, two, one plant to water instead of two. Um, and 
yeah, just treat them the same because they are the same. So they are going to magically go into one. I have a pot ready that I think they'll both fit into. Like I said, um, pepperoni, I don't need like excessive amount of root space. Um, it'll be interesting to look at the roots of these. Um, pepperoni, you don't need sort of really frequent repots, so I don't get to see their roots as often as some of my plants. Um, but yeah, so that's um, a to do for in a minute or maybe in the morning depending on the time and how sensible I'm going to be about bedtime, it might be that I do all the repotting tomorrow in daylight hours. I have a feeling that might be the sensible thing to do and I am trying to be sensible. <laughs> um, I think it would be a very sensible idea to leave the potting till tomorrow and go to bed with a little bit of reading and not have a stupidly late night. Does that sound very applaudable? I think so. So um, yeah, so for tomorrow, that is a job to do. A very, very satisfying job as well, because I've been wanting to do that for a while and um, that'll be great. Last of my Peperomia collection to show you is ugh, this one. First of all, what a cool pot, hey? This was from Hutch as well in Exeter. Very, very cool pot. They have a really good selection of pots. If you're looking for something a little bit different or just something really elegant, they have a real lovely mixture of tastes there. So I do feel like they've got a pot for everyone, for every plant. It's just, yeah, I bought this when I did the macrame workshop there. So um, it was the perfect spot to go and choose a pot to go and choose a pot having made a lovely macrame hanger. And this would have fitted in the macrame hanger but um i decided to put something plainer because the macrame hanger was just so so gorgeous did i ever show it to you when really you can't remember if i've shown it to you <clears throat> but yeah that was a workshop i did with with hutch house plants and it was fabulous and i really love my my hanger but i felt like although it did go with this and it did fit in i'm quite i'm quite simple in my taste and i don't really need like this amazing cool shape and the grayness that I mean to me that is a color it's not white so I didn't need like the grayness and the really cool texture shape of it plus a really cool hanger that was full of like interesting knots and was a strong color in itself it's like a mustard yellow so for me the, <laughs> the hanger just was so lovely and enough interest to just really need a plain white untextured pot um yeah and I know people in the in the workshop were saying to me oh no it totally goes it's fabulous I'm like I know I can I can totally see that it is but I just don't need all of that going on at once I I just like plain things so um yeah this on its own is is really fabulous but I don't need the extra of it anyway yeah, so Hutch House Plants, very, very cool place to choose pots from. Um, they have a really nice selection and quite a different, like, wide-ranging budget. And they've always got new stuff coming in. And this is just so cool. It's very, very touchable. It's very smooth, um, very rounded. And it's quite heavy, though, because um, obviously that's quite a lot of clay um, or whatever. Yeah, China. Um, anyway, on to the actual plant. This... Um, this peperomia, I have forgotten the name of it. Um, is it a Rosso? I will I will put the name up when I've checked. Um, this is a really, really veinated one. Um, really long, like really narrow, very ridged leaves, deep ridges, um, and very red underneath. Um, it's a bit of a sorry state because this has kind of been on my mental to-do list for a while to repot it. As I was saying earlier, when I buy a peperomia, I tend to prefer to repot it because I tend to find I just prefer my potting mix for peperomia. Um, and I feel like I can be sure of how it's going to need water if I've chosen the substrate and I know how well draining the substrate is. Um, and nothing against the shop and their choice of um you know um supplier or whatever it's just that's just my preference so um when i got this plant i thought 
and that is a very very full plant it was looking amazing it was perfect um it's looking very droopy and unhappy and there are some mealybugs in here which is really annoying um i do particularly hate mealybugs i always have done um i'm not scared of any bugs but there's just something about mealybugs that's kind of gross i don't know why i don't know why i find them so gross but i do um and they're just I find them much harder to get on top of than things like thrips or mm, spider mites are quite hard to get on top of sometimes. Um, but yeah, I just find them really, they're just really, really determined and they hide away so much. I think it depends on the plant, but so I've got an ongoing battle with an, with an aglaonema um, cutlass and it's been going on for months and it's doing okay, but it's just a really hard place to check through it's got so many leaves so many petioles and it's just yeah they are really really easy to, to they find it really <laughs> there are a lot of places for them to hide in um and this is a really tricky plant because it's so packed it's de so densely packed sorry i'm struggling with words um it's so densely packed and they are really ridgy, so there are just lots of little crevices for them to hide. And there's no way I can see right into the, the entirety of this plant. So the reason, as well as wanting to give it a different substrate, the reason I wanted to repot this is I want to divide it. It is quite a good size of a plant for a peperonia. And um, it's not that I want more plants of it or that I want to like sell them or give them away or, or use them as swaps or anything it's just that I find that some some plants are a bit over generous in how much of the plant they give you for that pot and I don't need it if that makes sense this one in particular is a good example when I first got it it was a lot fuller I have lost quite a few of the leaves I've had to remove some leaves that are dying and there are, there are some that I need to deal with because it's in a bad shape um so yeah when it when I brought it home it was so full and I thought there's no way I can keep this plant healthy in this state and, and I haven't <laughs> and I should have just reported it straight away or within the first few weeks I've had it a few months now and it's I think it's because I knew I wanted to show you all my peperomia and I, I kind of grouped that in this whole like all these jobs together I should have just got on and done done it and then told you about it later. Um, but sometimes my brain gets a bit preoccupied with um, other things as well. Um, anyway, I'm sorry, I'm not really telling you this in a very organised manner. I should have repotted this and divided this a long time ago. And as I haven't, it has struggled because of it. And my my concern was quite well founded that I would not be able to see into such a densely populated plant to deal with any any pests and sure enough it has got many bugs and I didn't spot them for a while because they were so well hidden so a bit like the folia, which I divided as soon as I got it um, um yeah similar treatment here I just want to divide it I want to get some air and some light and some space into the depths of the plant I think there are several plants in here and that's fine. Some people might just like having a really densely packed peperomia, but I don't particularly. And I would I would find this a much easier plant to care for if I had it um, spread out. Um, so I kind of really want to tackle this now. I might make the exception and just do this one now and then do the rest of the repotting tomorrow because... Um, yeah it's right here in front of me calling to me to pull various bits out it's got it's got some old flowers there's one i was going to talk to you about pepperoni flowers i've got so much i want to talk to you about and it's all wanting to spill out and i know i'm not presenting all these various pepperoni facts in a very organized way i could just have them written down and read them out in a speech to you in a list and i know that might be one way of presenting facts to you but i'm tending to just tell them to you when they pop into my mind when they're relevant to something that I'm already showing you at the end I will check my list of things I wanted to share with you and if I've missed anything I will tell you at the end um but I figure as long as it 
as long as it comes out at some point during this video, then you will hear it. Um, and yeah, that's just how my brain works. Um, so um, anyway. Uh, so yeah, this was the last one I wanted to show to you. And I think I think it's time to just launch straight into repotting and dividing this one and giving it what it needs. And then the other ones I will handle in the morning, uh, in daylight. Um, I do, first of all, have something in town. Um, I'm actually going to go and have uh, breakfast with my parents in town, which is a real treat. Um, so I won't be able to get straight into this um, straight after the school run. But when I've had a, a bite of something yummy with my mum and dad, I will come and get back into the other ones. And cut. Okay, so I'm stopping this video right there. So the repotting of this lovely Rosso will be the beginning of the next video, Peperomia Part 2, and all of the repotting of the other Peperomia will be in that video as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this first part, looking at all my Peperomia and hearing about where they've come from and how I've got on with them so far. Thank you so much for joining me, and if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and like and share and follow and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.